Real gentle. Let it go right here. Chin up. There you go. All right. I got you. Let the side go. Very good. You did great. My dog ran past me with the rope on, and I bent down to pick it up because mm -hmm. I was afraid she was going to go over the fence, and I just automatically did it, not really thinking too sure. much. But I bent down, and she ran so fast that I got swung this way, and then I kind of went around, and then oh. got yanked down. I fell on the ground, tried to catch myself, and so I hit that, and then the rope yanked this under, and uh -huh. I landed on the ground and hit the side of my my jaw in the dirt. And so initially when that happened, what uh, what were the main symptoms that say, like a month out? A month after that happened, I know you went through some initial, you know, um, they took a bunch of pictures and everything, but what were you feeling? What was the lasting symptoms after that? Um, after that, it was pain up underneath the rib, around the breast area. Right. Um, blurry vision, um, dizziness, felt like I was on a boat right. a lot. Um, just very unsteady. Okay. Um, confusion, lots of brain fog, uh -huh. um, digestive problems really came on hard. Um, I felt like I couldn't swallow water, like I would choke on it unless I turned a certain way. I could get it to, you know, digest or, you know, swallow. Okay. And then how much, how much neck pain? I'm just going to go, I'm going to go back, to, we're going to address specifically the, the rod they put in your neck. I'm trying to get justification for why. <laughs> Because a lot of what you're telling me, I'm gonna, I'll explain what I would say is the cause of that is inflammation of your sympathetic system, your parasympathetic system. There's definitely some inflammation right. that needs to be dealt with, but I don't have that symptom right there is not enough to justify. So I'm trying to figure out, did you, were you having experiencing a lot of neck pain after this fall? It was right in the back to where it would just, it would tense up, and then I would just okay all all the time would be going like this tilting away. And then, like, the brain fog would go away. I would find myself holding myself a certain way, and it would just alleviate a lot of okay. brain fog and stuff. That's the joint. So what, what that right. was was that you, the, the joints in your neck were sprained, and then when you tilt your head, it's called antalgia, we, you lean away from joints that are sprained. If you injure an ankle, you'll tilt away from it. So right. now the muscles act as a backup protection mechanism. So when you injure a joint or damage the ligament that holds the joint together, the muscles will go into a tight spasm to protect that joint. And that's actually not a bad thing. It's actually a good protective mechanism. Sometimes they'll give muscle relaxants and maybe they did, which then further allows the joint to get injured. Does that make sense? Right. It's not a good strategy to relax the muscles because not only were you saying that your head was you know, tilted, if I give a muscle relaxant, now my head goes even farther forward, right. right? Which then puts more stress on the disc. But from the from the fall in 2016 to they did a uh, you said a C five six or four five four, six. Four five five six. So yeah. the fourth, fifth, and sixth cervical vertebrae have been fused together. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And was there a change in your symptoms in your neck? What what was the progression? I'm trying to say up to 2020. So from 2016 to 2020. How did you see things change? I would say in the beginning, when I first got it, obviously I was still wearing my brace, okay. and I was down at my father's house, and I had to, you know, sit around a lot, so I was in a rough recliner. So back then, I was like, great, things are looking up, you know, my digestion's better, everything's clear, I don't have to, you know, do this a lot or, or lean, because obviously it felt like everything was normal. Gotcha. They always kept me to keep my shoulders down, was what the doctor said, keep your shoulders down. And, you know, okay. so I didn't feel like there was much going on at the time. I was like, maybe this was it. You know, this is perfect. Things are well. Yeah. And then I would say two, three months after I had to take off the, you know, the brace and stuff, I noticed with more moving than, or the way I sat and stuff like that, I was like, maybe something's aggravating maybe it was the wrong disc maybe it was the wrong nerve so it would start triggering weird things we're again. in january of 2019 here so a year before and we have three levels that there's disc injury the all of the discs are the same age obviously we we're all born they're all <laughs> made at the same time and three of them are older in the sense that they're compressed the bones have actually grown a little bit. There's no evidence of aging at the top here. This area is young. There's no 
uh, age disc at C2, and same thing with your upper back. So age has nothing to do with it. These vertebrae are the same age. Mechanically, you've been bending too much right here. So we wanna work on your atlas. This is that vertebrae right at the top that your skull sits on. Work on the axis and remove the stress from that area. Move it back up. If anything, you have a reverse curve here. It's not only just straight, but it's actually bending a little bit the opposite way where the injured area is because that's what's putting on the extra level of discal pressure in there. That's what ages these cushions, is the loss of the curve that we're supposed to have in our neck. You also mentioned that you were getting heart, heart issues, palpitations. palpitations. Yeah, like it, and like almost like anxiety-like. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely just um, almost what I thought were heart murmurs, mm -hmm. like, but it would just be like random. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I try to turn in the bed or something, and it would just start, chest would start going haywire. Go ahead and turn for me. So, because this area is under more mechanical stress from the position of your head, the head being forward puts an immense amount of muscular strain on your upper, upper back, lower cervical. The nerves that go to your heart exit T1, 2, 3, 4 on your left side right here. So inflammation of this area affects the brain-heart connection. And so we're going to work on this area in a minute to reduce any soreness in here, any tension, and then at the end of our visit, we're gonna show you how we can, at home, stretch your body to reduce the postural distortion. The postural distortion is ultimately what's, right. what needs to creating be addressed. All the... It's creating it. And you mentioned before you had been adjusted and you know, half hour later, things are, things are not getting back. Coming back, yeah. So adjustments from 1895 to 1997, they told us that adjustments change our posture permanently, and it's not true only through stretching can we change our alignment. Adjustments, massage, acupuncture, lasers, you know, all these therapies are used as tools to make your spine soft so that we can stretch. And that's my whole goal is to make your spine malleable and clean enough so that we can handle the depth required to actually do it. It takes time. You were saying before yes. in a video about um, yeah. fight or flight. Yes. And I know that sometimes when that happens, it can make you have to run to the restroom. Right. I'm not saying that that's sure. the case, but I do get to the point where I have to like hurry up and go, and it's it's everything's just it's your central nervous system going. Yep. Yeah. You have the the nerves that come from your back actually shut down your stomach. So we call them the sympathetic. When you're, you need to run, you don't need to digest food. So if there's inflammation in your middle back, that'll shut down the nerves. Stress shuts down the parasympathetic nerve. So when you're stressed out and you're in pain, I'm dying here at a moment work, you know, that shuts down the parasympathetic and so then either things get flushed too quickly or you're constipated, both ends can happen. Right. But um, the, another thing with the stomach is that it's underneath the bottom of your sternum. And so along with your posture, gastric reflux can happen because your stomach's being squeezed. Right. The alignment of your upper torso affects the stomach mechanically. And that makes sense. as we stretch and open up the front part of your body, your stomach won't be squeezed. Hey, Ed, my you know, reflux is getting better. My stomach's digesting food better. It's not going to be under that compression that it was. Right. And a deep breath in for me. And then head back for me. Let all the air out. Deep breath in. Come on. <laughs> Exhale. All right, deep breath in. I got you one more. Chin down a little bit. Nice. All right, stay right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Did it move some? Did, did it move some? That was really good. No, oh, was excellent. That was your back. Because <laughs> <laughs> I see on some of your videos where they're that like. That was beautiful. No, you did great. Like it's locked. No, that you do much better. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I, that's part of what I'm trying to say is that if your upper back moves, it's hard to age your lower neck at a, at a fast rate. Right. And so, you know, I, I do see ev evidence of, I don't, what, the MRI I looked at, I saw a 60-year-old lower neck. Do you understand? Right. I, di I didn't see a 90-year-old lower neck. I saw a 60-year-old lower neck, and I'm trying to get why did we, how did we, 
I could understand if it looked like 110 going, yep, there's nothing else we can do for you. Right. You know, I don't see, I have, you know, my goodness, half my patients with surgical candidates. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> right. gee, gee, somebody's uh, overstepping here a little bit. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I'm not going to, case that I said, let's not yeah, talk about the past. Right. I'm just feeling your upper neck here. I want, this is, this is going to be your culprit. So the, the mechanical utilization of this area has not been correct. And because this has not been correct, your lower neck has been allowed to do double, triple, quadruple the work. So I don't expect much kindness or friendliness or, and I love my upper neck being worked on, right? This is going to be, Ed, I feel like you're sticking your finger <laughs> in a very sore area. Does that make sense? Or a yeah. very sore joint. And this is what I would call a good pain. You understand? Right. We need to work through this. I gotcha. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Real gentle. Let it go right here. Chin up. There you go. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. A little sore? Tell me. Tell me. It, it's just like a little tight, like not sore though. Okay. I don't nope. really feel much of nothing. You did great. You did great. The only contraindication to that would be, Ed, when you adjusted me, I felt sh pain shoot down my arm. Do you understand? Yeah. No, that I would be something that I, if it's just, I expect the knuckle to be sore. When yeah. I adjust that, Ed, I, I feel the joint move and the joint was not very happy with being pushed on. That's a good sign. That's a good sign that we're in the right place because that is the reason for why your lower neck aged at a faster rate than normal. Same thing. There we go. Let me hold your head. I got you. Let this side go. Very good. You did great. It's just hard sometimes because the muscles are so tight I can't even feel like I can let go. You did great. No, no, you, did great. <laughs> you do have a functioning joint up here. This is supposed to be your main engine and you know every doctor you've seen, nobody asked the question, well why is your upper neck, Tina, young? Why? Yeah, nobody has said anything like why that. Why has your upper neck not aged at all? And we don't ask the inverted question. We just, well, we just focus on your disc injuries in your lower neck and the, and the arthropathy and the <laughs> height loss, right? We just yeah. focus on the damaged area without taking concern or understanding to the, to the young area that and biomechanically, so this is what we call chiropractic biophysics is what I'm teaching. Biophysics, they did enough research to show that your upper neck is supposed to work first. In a normal neck with a curve in it, the lower neck actually interlocks with itself. It can't be rotated unless you first lose the curve in the neck and then go farther into a reverse curve. That increases the pressure on the disc. It unlocks the lower neck. It actually stiffens the upper neck by having the curve lost in your neck, whereby right. now this becomes inverted. This becomes your main engine, your lower neck. The upper neck becomes a secondary engine. And so what we have to restore, like many patients that I see, is the functionality of your upper neck. And nobody's, I, I imagine, rubbed right here. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I haven't found anybody to help me or touch me right. other than go, right. Right. we'll just cut it. <laughs> so because this is tight, her lower neck has overstressed and it's just a matter of teaching you the rest of your life how to chew on this area. We bend up here. The rod just forces the issue and then the adjacent vertebrae above and below the rod, they will usually admit that those areas start getting overstressed and it becomes a, a domino effect. And so we want to stop or slow at the very least the adjacent vertebrae to the surgery from getting in trouble. So by Fixing the original problem, which is this upper neck being tight. That's the entire thing. The entire treatment is restoring your functionality of your upper neck. The adjustment is a tool to speed up the process of restoring that mechanical utilization. Right. To have a balance somewhere of figuring out what the patient can tolerate and ride that wave. We ride the wave of tolerance. <laughs> so your neck belongs way back here. This is the arch that your neck is supposed to be in. And so later That's in the visit... That's so weird. <laughs> right. Considering... Tina, hold on. If this felt normal, you wouldn't have anything happen. There wouldn't be anything wrong with your neck. Right. This feels weird is exactly why <laughs> you need to be here. Your neck is not used to being curved. Your neck's used to being reversed. Right. You understand? And so it's such a foreign position. Your neck's been has journeyed far from home and now I have to guide you to a place that you feel is foreign. I walked you into your own house 
and sat you down in the living room. You got this feels weird. Why? This is where you're supposed to be. <laughs> this is your living room. Where have you been living? <laughs> I live out there by the dumpster. Why are you out there? Well, it's part of my property, and it's my uh, the raccoons. Uh, we put food in the trash. No, that's not where you're supposed to be. Let's get you in your bed over here. You have a nice warm bed over here. Oh, this feels weird. I I don't know. What is this? What is this stuff on the ground? It's really soft. It's called carpet. You know. You know <laughs> <laughs> How do you not know about this is where you belong? This right. is where you were when you were a child. You had a curve in your neck. You did. <laughs> and you lost it, but we're trying to bring it back. And I'm sorry nobody has guided you and, and, and made it important and valuable to be in the right alignment. I was looking at pictures from when I was younger, and I'm like, God, I looked a little you know, off back then, too. So maybe it was the crib thing. Well, that was the like <laughs> Kids, don't fall out of the crib. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was wondering what that was gonna feel like. Yeah, that thing. A little Comey. There you go. Yeah, a little, little mark right there. Mm -hmm. Look at that side. Yeah, it's just softening. This is all a part of the. And then it's like acclimating to a mountain. You can't just take somebody from a thousand, you know, being used to say sea level and putting them at 10,000 feet, they're going to feel dizzy. Does that make sense? Right. So we slowly acclimate your head to being used to being in the curved position. That's what it takes time to do. And maybe later we can talk about trying to find somebody in West Palm that at least knows what a denaroll is. You understand that can... You know, I know you're just love me forever, but I'm saying, but the other, <laughs> there's other people. I'm not the only person that knows what a denaro is. Do you understand? Right, there's right, not, right. I'm not the only person that does postural change. Now, they not, might not do the rubbing. They might not do the gua sha, and you're going to have to guide them to help them work on your upper neck. But they're going to be at least trained in how do we get your curve back in your neck. And, you know, being able to try to find something like that in West Palm, maybe. I have to spend about three hours of time teaching you and showing your spine where to be, and then I can start feeling confident that you can do it yourself right. and do it at home and be able to do the stretches and do the things to keep your alignment better and then allow your spine to start aging evenly. And what the stretching does is it keeps the young parts of your spine at the forefront, keeps them at the loosest part of the equation so that they're the first area to be asked to work. So the brassiere is a I mean, brace or bra, the bra is a binding device that locks up your middle back and that's partly why on your MRI this area looks so young. Right. It's been protected and your lower back has been allowed to be the one that does all the work getting in out of a car, moving around. And then how I said with the neck, you're actually recruiting your upper back to do more work. Does that make sense? When yeah. your lower neck doesn't work and your upper neck doesn't work, you actually recruit your upper back to do the work that your neck is intended to do. And that's what stresses out the nerves that go to your heart it inflames the joints because the joints in your upper back are not designed to turn your neck and so it inflames them right they're doing a job outside of what they were intended to do and so all these micro I don't want to say all these injuries that I've had are just compacted against what was already there right yeah well we have postural distortions that start at a young age five years old we get told to sit and read and write and we bend forward right and we sit till 20 and we come out of school hunched forward and no one really values what happened well you're fine walk it off <laughs> you know. yep and then My we mom have told me years ago she's like you've always had back problems like even as a kid like a kid and i'm like oh great wonderful she's, well, the, i'm like what you do about it she's like nothing, nothing. <laughs> right well, there you go exactly so you had it's growing pains everywhere okay. well i need to start using that one right yes growing, growing pains. pains there you go that's what i heard a lot i like growing pains yeah my growing hurt. growing crooked pains right <laughs> my back's not lined up properly and so all of this is just all injuries that are avoided it becomes easy to lean away from the back side right because the back side of your spine has a lot of feeling the front does not so everything I do after I adjust you is to make the next time I adjust you better. If I could adjust you and put you right on stretches, see you later. I do the stretches and I'll see you in a month. Mm -hmm. But I expect that if I put you on stretching 
Ed, this is killing me, or I can't do it at all the way you want me to do it. That makes sense? Right. And so I use the soft tissue work as coercion to encourage the body to be supple and to be in the right position so that the stretching is not so difficult. It's not such a large disparity between where you want to be and where I want you to be. Good. This is your heart right here. Yeah, that's pretty sore. <laughs> right, and you're the first person to ever rub there. <laughs> yep, pretty much. I mean, you I know, can feel it myself when I'm leaning up against the couch or, you know, like right. the arm of the couch, and I'm like, ow, why does that hurt? Here's a Google bone for everybody. Cardiopulmonary nerve. First thoracic through the fourth thoracic on the left side. What is the cardiopulmonary nerve? Sympathetic, fight or flight. It's the gas pedal to your heart. What happens if this tissue is inflamed, falsely irritating the nerve that sends, to the signal, that sends a signal to your heart to speed up? Your brain didn't send the signal. It happened because of posture, injury, and so now your heart doesn't work properly. So you start seeing, you know, constrictions and palpitations and dysfunction, and it gets labeled as such, but the brain-heart connection is what's faulty. The heart doesn't do anything under its own volition. Right. You have to have this area and ask people, you know, how, how many people do you know have forward head posture? Well, it's pretty common. How many people do you know have tightness in there or soreness in their upper back. Well, it's pretty common. How many people do you know have high blood pressure? That's pretty common. Are those all yeah. separate or are there one problem? That's one problem called forward head posture. It was taught that adjustments do it. That I'm going to a skilled chiropractic adjustment. Hoo-yah! You understand? Yeah. whoop -ah! There we go. Your neck's all better now. Do you understand? That's what they taught. So what did you just do there with your whole oh, ah, You moved, you loosened the joints, good job. You loosened up some joints, hopefully they were the young joints, right? Hopefully you didn't adjust the overstressed joints because the more an adjustment becomes a manipulation, the less specific it is, right? right? So we're trying, Dr. Ed specifically was trying to put as much force into my upper neck and as little force as possible in my lower neck. It is impossible to put zero force into the lower neck. It's quite possible to put like 3%, 5%. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't want 50% of the force going into the lower neck. So we call that an adjustment. It's, a, it's an attempt to not just pop everything. <laughs> Let's just manipulate every single joint in your back non-specifically. We are trying to focus forces. Like when I'm rubbing your back right now, I'm trying to focus force here. I'm trying to not put any pressure here. Right. Notice, notice I've left your lower back alone and I've exclusively I'm trying to loosen your middle back without loosening your lower back because I've already seen your MRI right. and your low MRI shows me two vertebrae in the lower back that are 55, 60 years old. Okay, not too bad, but <laughs> they're definitely older than you are. And so we need to slow down their aging and we want to start aging all of these 18 year old vertebrae up here. So adjustments don't change posture, no matter how fancy they look or it sounds great. I wish it were true. You understand? I wish I didn't have to say this. I wish I could say, no, 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 no. Whoopa! I'm going to push the curve into your back and you'll have to come to me once a month and I will continually push the curve into your neck and that's the only way it's possible. It's not true. The only way to change posture is through stretching. And if you think about it, it's the same way that your posture was made worse. Yep. It was stretching that made it worse. Yeah. Sitting in a car, sitting bent forward, sitting in school that made your posture or avoidance of injuries, you had a car accident and then your head tilted to the left and you avoided it and so your body then healed in avoidance. It was stretching that made your posture worse. It's only stretching that fixes it. Surprise! <laughs> it cannot be fixed in any other way. Well, it's good that you keep pursuing help. I'm sure it's been discouraging. Oh, it's been a nightmare. Yeah. Just like, ugh. I feel like I've been just kind of like in an unmanned ship, just floating around, going, "Help, help!" Mm. Yeah. Mm. Somebody's got to do something. Mm. Oh, 
but like I said, it's, you know, I found you guys like, I don't know how long it's been, maybe, you know, six mm -hmm. months or something. Mm -hmm. I don't, there's no way I can really tell how long I saw your sister's videos, oh, cool. but nonetheless, it's like, you know, all this stuff was already said and done, but it's like, somebody still be able to help me. <laughs> yeah. If you give me a bowling ball to hold, I eventually drop it because I can't hold it forever. My muscles fatigue. How can I make a muscle strong enough to give me stability? The muscles get tired. How can that, how can we depend on, we have to depend on your alignment. The alignment's what gives you stability. Your alignment is not correct. That's what has to be altered. And all of this is prep work. This is all groundwork. I can't reshape hard clay. I have to soften the clay to make it malleable. This is softening. We're just trying to soften all that. Like right here, that's oh, yeah. all got to soften. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I'll get you later for that. <laughs> it's all in there. It's the last thing I do. I'm gonna work that out. That's right. Out. <laughs> That's right. Well, this is most of it. I don't know if I gave a percentage to it. Like 80% is your upper neck. Right. 80% of the responsibility of your lower neck is your upper neck, and then 20% is your upper back. So not having this area functioning here adds extra stress to your lower neck. But most of it's the atlas axis at the top there. Tickles. I'm trying not to laugh. Let it out. Let it out. Yeah. It's better than crying. That's right. <laughs> That's true. I've done enough crying. <laughs> It'll eventually feel good. I mean, I know it's not the most easy to hear on the first visit, but eventually it actually becomes a soothing. Like, I look forward to having my back combed. <laughs> it's very enjoyable once it's not so excruciating or sore. So we were planning on going to the beach after this. Yes, so, um, wonderful. Because I wanted to soak in the water. Yes, yes perfect, perfect. It's a pretty day too. That is the absolute best treatment after a visit, is to soak. As long as you can, just bring a gallon of water with you. <laughs> it will dehydrate you, so make sure okay. you drink a lot of water. You want to be using the skin as a, as a filter, right? right. So that through, the, through the skin, with the water, it takes all this acidity you can expel the soreness instead of having going to your bloodstream and then out your kidney we can extract it right from the skin it's like that emergency exit at the movie theater the exit's <laughs> right there but nobody uses it right we all right. walk back to the hallway yeah single file take single file forever. down the hallway that's the liver and kidneys and pee but there's an emergency exit right here on the skin that we can utilize if we tell the body to use it The reason why your shoulders forward is because you have a lower neck issue, and so the <laughs> there's right. a couple dominoes Goes there. Hand in hand, right so. there, we have to draw the shoulder back, and that's partly what we're doing. When I had you, and you can work the side, that would in and of itself will address this issue right. more slowly. But to speed it up, you need to work on blood flow and stretching the pec, and getting any soreness out of the front part of your glenohumeral joint here. Right there is right here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pretty, uh, the anterior yeah. edge gets a little inflamed and we need to work. 
I try to do that a lot at work is, is stretch it and stuff like that. But like you said, you got to kind of... It's hard to out. self. Yeah, I'm going to treat this one. It's like crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Crunchy, crunchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that, Carl, on this right there? There's a mark coming out real quick. So this is what you're feeling. Internally, you're feeling this soreness that the mark represents. Right. It's the internal acidity that irritates the nerves. Ed, my shoulder doesn't feel right. Correct, because there's stagnation, lactic acid, trapped in these tight areas of injury. And we have somebody's got to go in and break the cycle, get the ball rolling. That makes sense? And yeah. so that once... And then the stretching that I just showed you will prevent it from rebuilding up so quickly. To some degree, it's like your teeth. You have to brush them. No amount of, right. no amount of brushing gives somebody an exemption from brushing in the future. <laughs> we all have to continue cleaning. I brushed them 20 times today, so I don't have to brush them for like two weeks. Right, right, exactly, right. So it, doesn't, it still doesn't matter. There's, there's a lot in here right here. There's a lot of acidity that's been trapped. Yeah, sometimes I feel like, and not like, it's, sometimes I can't tell if it's a nerve thing or if it's just, it feels like the muscles are so short that it's making my it's, hand feel short and unable to. It's both. The lower neck being in trouble makes the health of the tissue not, it's compromised. This is compromised. So there actually is something in your shoulder, but it's all ultimately due to the neck. Right. But you, so ultimately, the more orthodox chiropractors would just work on your neck. Because fixing the neck will ultimately fix this. But you can speed up the process of helping the shoulder by working on it, is my opinion. Right. Okay. Lower neck where they operate on you is where the nerves that go to your shoulder come from. So they're tied together. The right. lower neck discs are what allow the health of your shoulder to be maintained. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Holy moly, I look great. <laughs> so... <laughs> We got a lot of cleaning to do. This all. Look at all that toxin. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm just gonna compress this hold. There we go. There we go. Good. Okay. I know. We got this area right here is the most responsible for the sciatica. Right. Keeping this area in the game, and I'm gonna show you in a minute with a roller. We're gonna start with the roller up here and we're going to inch by inch move it down to right about here. We're a little bit below the bra, st bra strap mm -hmm. and this keeps this area moving as your first primary worker. You want to keep your upper back, middle back working. And then I'll show you the device called the cervical deneral which is what you're going to use to work this curve into your neck. And there's a couple positions we can teach you with that. So, Okay. All right. So you're going to push your elbow back Right now, go ahead and push your elbow. There you go, good. And then look up for me and press it back for me. There you go, good, nice. Okay. <laughs> Almost there. All right. Carl loves my ear adjustments. All right, I'm going to have you just tilt your head a little bit to the left. Okay, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> tilt your head a little bit, yeah. A little bit to the left, tilt left. Tilt your head to the right a little bit for me. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, keep your knees together and feet together. Oh, there, there you go. Good. You you roll. Okay. Yeah, you're trying to trying to work those vertebrae in. They're like a drawer. Sometimes gotcha. we gotta. And so, the difficulty you might encounter is that the longer you get between an adjustment, or the longer you are from your adjustment, the more difficult this is going to be. Right. So. That's when you need to get back in, get adjusted again, and then get back on your stretching to change your posture. And same thing, go feet together, knees together, and knees left. There you go. And try to work, stretch that right side open. This is a good way to relieve sciatica. If you feel it going down the right leg, this will open up the right side. Then you bring your knees back up, and then you bring your knees to the left, right. There you go. This is the hardest way to go. That side's not so bad for some reason, but that uh -huh. side. Coming this way. Well, you almost don't want to take the, the easy side farther until you get this side to catch up. Right. So bring these back up. And sometimes you can take your hands, especially if, you're, if your lower back's hurt and you put them on your thighs, and you try to push. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you just open up that lower back a little bit. And that can, you know, it's hard. It's just, 
way to traction that lower back a little bit. But right. And then you move down one inch, go ahead and try to roll. Yep. Here you go. I know. Oh, Doc. It's like this one seems to be the the tightest. Like I feel like I'm on a lump. <laughs> that's what you got to work on. Yeah. You got to work on those. Those. That's what I was showing you on that on your picture. Right. There's all sorts of adhesions and glue in there, and we would work through that over the first handful of visits. You'd get to a point where, Ed, I don't feel any glue in my back anymore, and I can stretch properly. And it's a it's a process. It's a lifestyle to change your posture. Right. It's this is what I mean by chiropractic biophysics and you know mirror image stretching I do it every day the rest of my life you know every day we stretch at the end of the day it's like brushing your teeth we have to learn how to do it how to do it without hurting ourselves and then so this is what we use in the middle upper neck sometimes you take your hand and you press it onto your forehead to get your head to sink let your chin go up a little bit there you go get the idea mm -hmm. trying to press it in and then yeah. see if you can relax your hand back down and your neck might stay there. To get off of it, you use one hand to passively lift your head. Okay. Take the device out. Don't lift your head, especially after 20 minutes on this. It's going to feel very odd. <laughs> your back of your neck might be warm or tingly. Don't just lift your head up off the device. Okay. The second position is a little more difficult. You have to have a carpet or something rigid, and you. I sort of grab the side of the device, and I let it rotate. Yeah, no wonder why it felt weird. <laughs> the idea. It was and now I'm using the flat edge to push downwards on the upper back. Okay. In this position, maybe you stay for a few minutes, see how much you can move the arms over if it's too. You can move the arms a little bit, so like, you know, find a less difficult, you know, hang in there. But you're trying to do as much time as you can. So this would be <laughs> incorrect, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that's it's, pushing forward. Or see how my chin's down. Forward it's just pushing my head forward. Secret. Right. Not, not good. to avoid that, right? Okay, right. This would be bad. And I did it like this for a month. It didn't do anything. <laughs> Correct. This is the wrong <laughs> position. <laughs> I need it. Forward it posture. I need it down and the head going over it. Okay. These devices prevent you from ever going back to being dirty car. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I've lived with a clean car now. I don't ever have a dirty car ever again. This is like an automatic washer. Right. This is what you use to keep your neck clean, to keep your head back, and it's just getting you acclimated to stretching. It's just something that we've never done. Right. Nobody, I'm the first person to put you on a device and ask you to, this does not feel normal. But I had you on your back and I put you in the neck. That's where your neck belongs. Right. This is, the whole purpose of this is to emulate that. It's the best, the best I got. Right, right. The best, I held you, remember I held, I held you like this? Um. If I could sell you this, <laughs> here you go. Put your head on that. <laughs> it's like a bird beak. Oh, right, yeah. you want to, but I need you holding it yeah. for 20 minutes. It's not just doing it for five seconds or 20 seconds. It's got to be held. And then what happens when you get off it, you're going, whoa, I feel like my head's like way far back now because you just. I kind of feel that way, even though I feel like I'm a little bit forward still, but I do feel like I'm like. When, when you do 20 minutes, you're going to get off and feel like you're falling like, back because we just took you to the opposite extreme. See, being here and then taking you to here. You, it's not enough. We have to take you, we have to overcorrect you to make this where you want just to be. To get. To, just to be upright. Right. We have to overcorrect. Yeah. Oh, I love you. Hi. Thank you. 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 Thank you